everybody. Amen. Isn't it a great day to be alive? Thank God for that. Amen. We have come again as we look forward to every Sunday to come and worship before the Lord and to gather in this place and to respond to you in terms of a virtual worship experience. And we thank God for what he has already done to help us to provide for you the spiritual food that you desire for each week. And so we are asking you now to uh, connect and share and have a watch party and to reach out to your family and your friends that you connect with us this morning. We sincerely believe that the Lord has a special blessing for you uh, as you tune in to us today. So we're getting ready now to begin our worship experience uh, with our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in our courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. The Lord is in his holy temple, that all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth sing his praises. We're going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We're going to sing his praises. And we're going to sing this hymn of the church, Standing on the Promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Our refrain is just standing, standing, standing on the promise of a God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Let us now join in together, even though you're not presently with us in this sanctuary, but wherever you are, come on and join and sing as we lift up this hymn, Standing on the Promises. Standing on promises of Christ my King through eternal ages, through eternal ages I let shout. his praises ring glory in the highest I will shout and, and sing. sing standing on the promises of God oh, yes. I'm standing, oh, standing 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 on the promises of God I Oh, 
Standing on the promise. Standing on the promise. I cannot I fall. Cannot fall. Listening every moment. Listening every moment. To the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior and my all and all. Oh, I'm standing on the promise. Come on, Jack. Oh, I'm standing. Yes, I am. bless every one of you as we are standing even right now on the promises of God. Will you humble your hearts in a moment of prayer for our invocation? Father God, as we turn our hearts towards you, not for selfish gain, but to receive God from you understanding and your direct path for our future. Fulfill us now with your promises. And help to remind us that we are your servants. We need your grace today. For your unfailing love overwhelms us even right now. You have the answers to all of life's trials, and concerns, and situation. Help us now to walk in the liberty of your love. Speak now to us, God, through this worship experience. Help us that we will continue to walk according to your ways. Help us, God, that we can praise you uprightly. Help us this morning, Father, that we will hide your word in our hearts, that it will control our behavior and our action and our tongues. Thank you, Father, for this day you have given us. Now, God, come into this sanctuary, come into our various homes, even though we are distant from each other, but Lord, help us to be spiritually connected. Father, we need you in a very special way. We come, God, to humble our hearts before you and ask of you, God, one more time to send down your blessings upon us. Forgive us of our sins and our trespasses that we will not allow anything to interfere with your will and your way for our life today. Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Father, we need you because this world is in a state of chaos. And we need you, God, to help us to continue to find our way that we will never lose sight of your hand to guide us to the maze of life. Help us to remain strong in our faith that we can stand against the darkness of this world, that your light will shine upon us, open our eyes that we can see, God, your ways. Oh, Father, without you we are nothing. So, God, that power that you have given us Help us now to allow it to just overflow. For the word of God said you are our shepherd and we shall not want. That your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. So in this worship experience right now, we believe that you are going to be able to lift up heavy burdens. 
We believe, oh God, right now that people have found answers that they have been praying about. We believe, oh God, there is some richness in this worship experience that will bless lives and keep people sane and help them to see that they are not alone. Oh God, in this service today, we believe, God, that you're going to open up the highways of heaven and that we were going to receive such a blessing that it's going to overflow, that it's going to touch our families, our friends. It's just going to flood everybody that's connected with us today. So, God, we thank you right now for what you're getting ready to do. And we praise you right now for what you've already done. Because we know, God, that you have brought us a mighty long ways. And you the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so, God, we just thank you for one more rising. One more rising of a new morning, a new possibility, a new opportunity. For this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it, God. We are not going to allow the devil to have the last word over us today. We're going to have allow you to have the last word over us today, God. And greater is that light, greater is that word, greater, God, is upon our life. We believe for greater today, greater shall happen. And something good is going to happen to us. We believe it right now. As a matter of fact, we're making room in our hearts, in our space, in our personal space to receive it all right now. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just say thank you. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you this morning. Oh God, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Yesterday we had our men's retreat, and in our men's retreat, they used the first chapter of Joshua as their backdrop for their theme. So today we're going to continue in that vein, but this time we're going to be reading from the sixth chapter of Joshua. The sixth chapter of Joshua, beginning at verse 1. The sixth chapter of Joshua, verse 1. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with his kings and his fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark. On the seventh day, March around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. 
This is the reading of God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 This morning, let me give a shout of thanks to our missionary society and all of those individuals who have donated uh, face masks uh, to be distributed uh, to help us to uh, combat this coronavirus uh, that we are still in the midst of. Thank you, missionary. Thank you, uh, individuals who handcrafted and made uh, face masks. We certainly give a shout out to you. We are about 51 days for our national election. Please note that you can obtain uh, an absentee ballot uh, application. You need to contact your local election office. Please do that if you're not registered to vote. And as a matter of fact, put it on your calendar to do list to do it tomorrow. Do it tomorrow if you are not registered to vote. If you have questions about being registered, then call your local election offices. For, they will give you some guidance in how you can become a registered voter. And if you have received your absentee ballot application, please send it in immediately. Make sure you fill out all of the fields and then sign and date your application and mail your form to your local election office. Please pay attention to your state's specific deadline because each state is different in terms of when you must submit your application of your ballot for your absentee ballot. Please vote this year. Whether you vote by mail, whether you stand in long lines, please vote for your country is depending upon you. This concludes all of the announcements at this time for this service, and we will prepare now to invite all of you who are watching us by live stream that you can give. Uh, you can see the streaming of the contact information. You can go to our website, and you can click on to donate and follow the prompts, or you can give text to give. Whatever means you use, certainly partner with us, even though you may not be a member of our congregation, but you are still in, in a part of the body of Christ. So come on and, and, and sow seeds into this ministry, and we thank God for you right now, uh, what you're getting ready to do and what you shall do. Let us now begin our service of receiving our offering. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tides and offerings. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Amen. Amen. As we prepare our hearts now for, for intercessory prayer, the song that we sung as, as our opening hymn, Standing on the Promises of God. How many of you know that's the only thing you can really stand on these days? Amen. The only thing we can stand on is, is the promises of God. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of, of a story I ho heard about a, one of our senior citizens who, who happened to be a woman. But when she talked about standing on the promises of God, she literally wrote scripture down and put it in her shoe. 
Did you hear what I said? She wrote scripture down and put it in her shoe. And really, as she would walk, she would state and quote those scriptures as she went through her daily life. But she literally put it in her shoe. I think it's time for us to start standing on the promises of God and do it in a different way than we've done before. I mean, if it works for you, write it down and put it in your shoe. Put it on the mirror before you get when you get ready in the morning so you can see what God's promises are. Because the world is really trying to tell you that the enemy is winning and he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. We need to understand that Jesus came there so that we could have life and have life more abundantly. And that abundant life is captured in the promises God's made to you. You know, one of, one of the things that's helpful for us to remind ourselves is when Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh, God didn't say deal with that on your own. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is still sufficient regardless of what you're going through. But the way we act on that is we've got to stand on his promises and believe that he that, it, that promise is able to fulfill what he's already spoken. So would you just right now assume the position for prayer? I mean, if you're driving, just, you know, keep your eyes on the road, but bow your heart to the Lord as we go before the throne of grace. And, and really, I want you to see every problem, every situation, every circumstance you have through the lens of the promise of God. And if you look at it through the lens of the promise of God, you will see it differently. So would you bow your hearts before the Lord now? Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord God, we thank you for your loving kindness. And Lord God, your grace is so amazing, Lord God, we can't even comprehend it, Lord. For Lord God, while we were yet sinners, Lord God, you gave your son Jesus, Lord, the Lamb of God who died for us, Lord. Father God, you did the great exchange, Father God. You made he who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made your, made your righteousness in him, Father God. Therefore, Father, we can come boldly now to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus to find grace and obtain mercy to help in the time of need. And Father God, as we, Lord God, come, Father God, there, there are some in need of healing, Lord God. There, there are some that are in need of, of restored relationships, Lord. There are some that are stand in need, Lord God, for provisions, Lord God, and sustenance, Lord God. But Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that your answer, Lord God, is an empty cross and an open tomb, Lord, for we do serve a risen Savior. And Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you didn't spare Jesus, but you freely gave him up for us all, and you've said in your word, Lord God, how shall you not with him give us all things, Father God. Father God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that every need of every man, woman, boy, and girl is met right now in the mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that cancers are shrinking and dying in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that diabetes is not only in control, Lord God, but it's dissipating in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that feeble knees that couldn't even stand, Lord God, are not le now leaping in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that provisions are knocking at the door of your people, Lord God, and they will be obedient to you to open the door, Father. Father God, I thank you now, Lord God, that bereaved families, Lord God, who have loved, lost loved ones, Father God, are finding solace, comfort, and strength in you, Father God. Father God, I thank you that hearts, Lord God, that have been affected by the venom of hatred, Lord God, are now forgiving, Lord God, and becoming, Lord God, good soil for your word, Father. And Father God, as we come, Lord God, we come standing on your promises, Lord, for we know in your promises, Lord God, your response is amen, so be it. 
And Father, we lift up our pastor, Lord. We lift up Pastor Wright, Sister Jennifer. We speak life and blessings over them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. We speak your blessings, Lord God, over the people of Quinn, Lord God. And not only Quinn, Lord God, but all of your people, Lord God. We, Father, that we receive all these and all other blessings in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We are living in unprecedented times, times that we have never seen before. Despite all that we are going through, we must hold on and trust that God's will will work out. Believe this, He knows what we are going through knows our every thought. He knows your name. He knows your name. Yes, he knows your name. He knows my name. He knows And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. He knows my name. He knows. Walk with me and 
Thank you, Phyllis. To encourage us that the Lord knows our name. Amen. A lot of people may not know our name. Some people know our names, but they didn't want to call our name. But thank God this morning that the Lord knows our name. That he walks with us. He talks with us. He gives us all that we need. Thank you, Father, for knowing our name. And thank you, God, for giving us another name. Jesus, thank you for the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Where every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Thank you again, our songbird. Thank you. If you again would turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 6. I am piggybacking on our men's day retreat on yesterday. Joshua chapter 6. Verses 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 6. Verses 1 and 2. From the New King James Version. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king, and his fighting men. Now Jericho was tightly shut up. Because of the Israelites. No one went out. And no one went in. This morning I want to share with this subject matter. The Jericho challenge. The Jericho challenge. In our biblical text today, Joshua has been given a divine assignment to lead the Israelites to the promised land. The promised land was a land that God had promised Abraham that he would give to him and his descendants. However, the Israelites suffered a major setback. They were enslaved in Egypt for some 400 years. Under the leadership of Moses and divine intervention, they were finally liberated from the torture of Egyptian bondage. On their way to the promised land, there were several major hurdles they must cross in order to get to the promised land. There was the Red Sea blocking their way. But on God's orders and divine intervention, they miraculously successfully cross over to the other side of their Egyptian bondage. There was another problematic moment for the Israelites. Moses, their fearless leader, died. And the people were bewildered about who would now lead them to the promised land. God selected Moses' mentee, Joshua, to take the mantle of leadership immediately upon receiving the call of leadership. Joshua and the Israelites had another severe challenge. The challenge was, how were they going to cross over the swift, overflowing Jordan River? 
here again by divine intervention. Joshua and the Israelites crossed over the other side of the Jordan on their way to the promised land. Now comes their biggest challenge thus far. In order for them to get to the promised land, they must go through Jericho. They couldn't go around the city. They couldn't bypass the city. They had to go through the city in order to get to the land of promise. In other words, they had to conquer the city of Jericho if they were ever going to arrive in the land of promise. Jericho stood in the way of their progress. Jericho stood in the way of their long fulfilled dreams. Jericho stood in the way of their independence and their freedom. Jericho stood in the way of their prosperity and their future. Jericho, a fortified city. Jericho, towering like a titan on the barren plains north of the Dead Sea. Jericho with successive walls and circling stone houses. Jericho, the outer walls seven feet wide and 16 feet high. Jericho, where a citadel guarded the north end. Jericho, where a thick forest of palm trees eight miles long and three miles wide stood as the barrier on the east of the city. Jericho, where steep hills protected the western wall. Joshua and the Israelites had already come through some severe challenges, but nothing like Jericho. They had fought battles in the wilderness, but always on their turf and terms in an open plain. Never ever had they fought a fortified city. They had no longer had never gone up against such an opposing figure. They had never dealt with such a formidable foe. They had fought battles but before, but nothing like Jericho. Jericho was different. Jericho wasn't a normal kind of challenge. Jericho was unique and unusual. Yet, Jericho must be conquered. Their future, their livelihood, their independence, their freedom, all depend upon them conquering Jericho. Does conquering Jericho sound familiar to any of us? Do we also have a Jericho that need to be conquered before we can enjoy our peace, our freedom, and our prosperity? I'm talking about a Jericho that consumes our thoughts and saps our strength. I'm talking about a Jericho that robs us of a peaceful night's sleep. I'm talking about a Jericho that sits between us and our promised land. I'm talking about a Jericho with its imposing size and intimidating nature. Let me put it another way. What is that one battle we must win in order to fulfill what God has planned for our life? What is that challenge that consumes our thoughts and excites our fears? What is that one thing that causing anxiety and a strong imposition to affect our joy and our happiness. Is it a marriage that's gone cold? Is it a hidden addiction? Is it a job we didn't get? Is it the betrayal of a friend? Is it a diagnosis that flipped our life upside down? Is it a child we don't recognize anymore? Is it a disappointment that frustrates and exhausts us? Is it an unexpected death? Is it coronavirus being quarantined and hemmed in? What is our Jericho that's confronting us day in and day out? If the truth be told, we all have a Jericho that needs to be conquered. We all are facing a Jericho that needs to be defeated. 
We all are staring at a Jericho that needs to be destroyed. The question for us is do we believe that our Jericho can be conquered? Do we believe that we can get through our Jericho on our way to the place where God will have us to be spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically? Do we believe that our Jericho can fall right before our eyes? According to Joshua, if our Jerichos are going to fall, there are some steps we must take in order to conquer our Jericho. What are these steps that we must take to conquer our Jericho? Well, the first step we must take to conquer our Jericho is to recall our previous accomplishments with the Lord. Recall our previous accomplishments with the Lord. Listen to this statement. If we cannot cope with the future, then we should check with the past. After the Israelites had safely crossed over the Jordan River, Joshua commanded a dozen men, one from each tribe, to return to the riverbed of the Jordan River. They had to return to the very area where the priest had stood and dislodged 12 sizable stones as the people watched and the water resumed their flow. Joshua stacked the stones. When the 12th stone was securely placed on the top spot, Joshua returned to his people and urged them, when your children Ask their fathers in the time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel cross over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan River right before you until you all had crossed over. Joshua established monuments was a symbol to convey to his people that before we begin moving to conquer Jericho, we must first recall what God has done for us. In other words, Joshua wanted his people to capture the crossing of, Jer of the Jordan River in their memory. Before they can start looking forward to Jericho, he wanted them to look backward to Jordan. And what God had accomplished there. Beloved, before we face our challenge, we should take a quick tour of God's accomplishments in our lives. Look at all the paychecks he has provided. Look at all the blessings he has given. Look at all the prayers he has answered. Look at all the healing he has done. Look at all the breakthrough he has provided. Look at all the enemies he has defeated. Look at all the chances he has given. Therefore, don't go to Jericho until we have a flashback about our Jordan. Remember all the accomplishments. Remember all the victories. Remember all the successes. Remember all the achievements. It will give us confidence. We need to believe that our Jericho can be conquered. Because I do believe now that somebody already have at least one accomplishment. Where the Lord showed up and did some surprising things and made a way out of no way for us. And so the same God who did it then can do it now. So we got to go back and look what God has already done for us before we take on Jericho because it will give us the belief and the promises to stand on that Jericho can fall because the same God who did it then, he still can do it now. So before we face our Jericho, we must first recall our previous accomplishments with the Lord. Amen. The second step 
we must take to conquer our Jericho is to reclaim our identity in the Lord. Reclaim our identity in the Lord. The first step is recall our previous accomplishment with the Lord. The second step is reclaim our identity in the Lord. Let's use our imagination for a moment. Let's imagine some impatient soldiers approach Joshua saying, the stones are stacked and the moment is mem memorialized. Can we attack now? Moses said, I mean, Joshua said, not yet. God has another instruction for the Israelite before sending them into battle. And that is, remember whose you are. At the time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again the second time. You see, what had happened with the Israelite is during their wilderness wandering, they let the practice of circumcision lapse. God inaugurated the practice as a covenant sign between God and the Israelites to distinguish them from the pagan nations. The practice of circumcision made them a child of the covenant. In other words, they must always remember that they belong to God. The act of circumcision declared a new identity. God was saying to them, you are no longer who you were. You are mine. You are no longer slaves, but free. You're no longer in bondage, but liberated. Before they would face their Jericho, it was time for them to reclaim their birthright as God's chosen people. Jericho may be a formidable foe. It may appear impossible to be conquered. But before you approach Jericho, you must move forward in knowing who you are. This is God's message for us today. As we face our Jericho, we must remember whose we are. Christ has cut away our old life. Our former life no longer exists. We are now new creatures in Christ Jesus. As a matter of fact, we are God's children. We are Christ's friend. We are a member of Christ's body. We are redeemed and forgiven of all of our sins. We are complete in Christ. We are free from condemnation. We are God's co-workers. We are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. We are God's masterpiece. We are adopted into God's family. We are born of God. We are citizens of heaven. We have been bought with a price. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We cannot be separated from God's love. We can find grace and mercy at the time of our need. We are still, we are still the head and not the tail. We can do all things in Christ who gives us strength. We have God's angels watching over us. We have the eyes of the Lord upon us. We are the children of the one who's able to do imaginably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. We are the recipients of God's wisdom, creativity, good breaks, the right connections, his strength, his joy, and his victory. Before we approach our Jericho, make sure that we know whose we are. When we know whose we are, all things are possible in Christ Jesus. We know that we are not born a loser. We are not a washout. We are worthy of being loved and appreciated. We are worthy of being accepted. 
We are worthy of living our best life now. We are worthy of living with expectancy. We are worthy of having purpose for our life. We are worthy of living in our own promised land. All because we know whose we are. Therefore, Jericho must fall because we know whose we are. And when we know whose we are, we know one thing for sure, that God is not finished with us yet. That means Jericho must fall. But don't you dare go to Jericho and not knowing whose you are. Because you got to know who's going to fight your battle for you. You got to know where your victory is going to come from. You got to know where your strength and power are going to lie. Because Jericho is a hard city to conquer. Jericho is strong and powerful. Jericho may be too much for your strength and your power. But when you know who you are, when you know who you are, you know that you fight from victory and not for victory because Christ has already given you the victory in his name because at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he's Lord so you got to know whose you are you got to reclaim your identity in the Lord and then finally not only do you have to <laughs> in the fact of trying to conquer your Jericho. Not only should you recall your accomplishments with the Lord, my Lord. And, uh, and not only should you reclaim your identity in the Lord, but thirdly, you must receive your strategy from the Lord. Receive your strategy from the Lord. Let's again use our sanctified imagination one more time. Let's picture the soldiers perking up as Joshua the commander finally announces it's time to take Jericho. Great! We're ready. Let's go, they reply. We have our ladders and ropes. We will scale the walls. Our spears are sharpened and our swords are polished. Which side do we attack first, Joshua? Joshua looks at his men and he says to them, well, God has a different strategy. Joshua outlines the most unlikely of attacks. He says to them, take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets a ram's horn before the ark of the Lord. Then Joshua commands his soldiers to march before and behind the priests. He tells the priests to blow the trumpet continually as they walk around the city once a day. As for the rest of the people, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice. Nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. Can you see Joshua's soldiers, his men saying, wait a minute. You mean to tell me no war cry, no hand to hand combat, no flashing swords, no flying spears. No battling rams or catapults, just priests, rams' horns, marching and silence. What in, the, what in the world kind of a warfare is this? Joshua said, it's a spiritual warfare. Every battle ultimately comes to this point. It's a spiritual battle. Talk to me. 
Whatever your Jericho is, it's a spiritual battle. Every conflict is a contest with Satan in his forces. That's what Paul teaches us. He says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Just as Jericho was a stronghold in Canaan, we too have our strongholds in our own lives, such as strongholds of guilt, strongholds of self-pity, strongholds of pride, strongholds of rejection, strongholds of defeat, strongholds of performance, strongholds of materialism, strongholds of resentment, strongholds of failure, strongholds of fear, strongholds of bitterness, strongholds of prejudice, strongholds of negativity, strongholds of anger. We all have our stronghold. But God has given us the power to demolish strongholds. And not only will God give us the power, but he will also give us the strategy to demolish our strongholds. We have to be obedient when he gives us his strategy to destroy our strongholds. The reason being is that his strategy may not always make sense to us. You see, it didn't make sense to Abraham that he would be the father of many nations when he and Sarah, his wife, were beyond childbearing years. It didn't make sense to Noah to build an ark when there had never been a storm cloud in the sky, no rain upon the earth. It didn't make sense for Naaman to be healed of leprosy by being dipped seven times in the muddy Jordan River. It didn't make sense to Mary that she would conceive a child by immaculate conception. Sometime 